This week, we'll learn some tools to check the performance of our machine learning algorithms on the Weather in Australia dataset. Welcome to another MetPy Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer for Unidata. This week, we're going to keep working on the Weather in Australia dataset. I hope that you took some time in the last week to play with it and see what you could get performance-wise by using different features or even making up some features with feature engineering or doing some more data processing on the front end, trying different algorithms, tuning hyperparameters, all of that fun exploration that you can do. So we're going to start up where we left off down here, which was saying, hey, we actually didn't do too bad. We got a score of 78.9. So you might be thinking, wow, with just a few features and some very basic uh, engineering here, we're already not doing too bad. Well, it's not quite time to start your startup just yet, because we're going to look at some ways that we can check the performance of our algorithm and not fool ourselves. And we hinted at that last week with this histogram of the data, and that there were far, far, far more no rain days than rain days. So let's check out some tools here. From sklearn.dummy, I'm going to import the dummy classifier. The dummy classifier is something that we're going to baseline ourselves against, and there are a few different forms of the dummy classifier. We're going to try two. So I'm going to have a frequent classifier. It's the dummy classifier, where we're going to set the strategy to be most frequent. Then we're going to fit that to our X train and Y train data. What the most frequent dummy classifier does is looks at your data and says, well, what's the most frequent class? In this case, it's no rain. And we're always going to predict that. So if you had more classes, whichever class has the highest number of instances, that's going to be the prediction no matter what. For our frequent predictions, we're going to use our frequent classifier dot predict on our X test data. Now remember, the test data is data that it's never seen before, so it can't have memorized it. And now we're going to create one more dummy classifier, the uniform classifier. The strategy here, we're going to set to uniform. And again, we're going to fit on X train and Y train. The Y uniform predictions are uniform classifier dot predict on the test data. So the beauty of the interface is all of these different methods that you can try all follow this split the data fit the data, predict the data methodology. And now, score the data. So let's look at the frequent classifier. And we'll call the same dot score method that we did after we'd done all that effort to engineer our nearest neighbors. And it's 77.7. .7. So here's 78.9 and 77.7. .7. We get about a percent advantage for all that work, but just predicting no rain, you're still right, 77.7% .7 of the time. What about a uniform classifier? We expect this to do worse, uh, especially if it's going to be a 50-50 chance and most things are no rain, then we should have maybe slightly above 50. And okay, so we're right at about 50, 49.9. So pretty much an even chance of getting it right or getting it wrong. 
But this doesn't tell us a lot. Now, we can guess what's going wrong here, that we're missing trues, but we certainly don't know that's the case. And again, you're the easiest person to fool when you're working on data that you're familiar with, so you should be thorough in how you check it. The best tool that I want to show you to do this is the confusion matrix. Now, we're going to talk next week about some other different scoring methods that you can use that are very useful. But the confusion matrix is where I always start. So from sklearn.metrics, we're going to import the confusion matrix. So it's going to take the actual data that we know, did it rain or not, in Y test, and then the Y predicted. And it spits out this matrix that's not really that pretty. But let's break it down. This top left number is the number of true negatives. So how many times do we say it's not going to rain? And indeed, it did not rain. 22,000. So that is where our 77, 78% score is coming from. Down here, how many times did we say it was going to rain? And it did. So these are true positives. 2,919. False positives are in the top right position. How many times did we say it was going to rain? And it didn't. And then false negatives are down here in the lower left. How many times did we say it wasn't going to rain? And it did. So it depends on your problem, what's the most important thing here? Is it more important to predict rain? Is this some kind of outdoor prediction that you need to know if it's going to be raining for some event? And it's okay to predict it and it not happen maybe? You'd rather that? Or would you rather miss a few but get a higher overall score? Now, this is a pretty simple problem that doesn't have a lot of consequences, probably. But if it's something that is uh, medical or has a greater threat to life, property, and so on, it can be a big deal how you engineer this, how you want this confusion matrix to look, because it's never going to be purely diagonal, the true negatives and true positives. If you had a 100% score, you probably wouldn't be doing this. Okay, so let's look at the confusion matrix for our other classifiers. Let's look at the uniform predictions. Now remember, we don't have near as many rain days as not rain days, so the matrix is going to look a little funny. But the negative class in the first row and the positive class in the second row since these numbers are very close to each other in the columns, it means it's about 50-50, which we saw, 49.9 score. So we've predicted rain when it was going to happen and was not going to happen, and predicted dry when it was not going to happen and was going to happen about equally. And now, let's look at our final confusion matrix the most frequent prediction. How many false positives did we have? Well, we, we can't because we're always predicting no rain. What about how many true positives? Again, we can't have any because we're always predicting no rain. So true negatives, very high number since our data set skewed, and false negatives, pretty small number overall. So again, we did not bad just by guessing no rain. So Confusion matrices are where you should start, look at your data in great detail, and we'll talk about some strategies that we can use to combat these unevenly split data sets, and some more metrics that we can look at that give us a better summary of, well, what's the recall? And some of these other terms that you probably read in the machine learning papers that you're looking at. I hope that you found this useful, and I'll see you on next week's MetPy Monday.